Hello, friends. Thank you so much for joining me here this Saturday. President Joe Biden now supports changing the filibuster. This means new relief provisions could be included in the massive spending bill. Friends, welcome back to my channel today. This is your daily news report and Fort Stimulus Check update. I will be going over the latest news and information on the fourth round of stimulus payments. Next Friday, I will be giving away two more Walmart gift cards. Please, make sure to watch until the end of this video to learn the details on how to enter the giveaway. Thank you so much, friend. Progressives are feeling emboldened after President Biden backed fundamentally changing the filibuster, adding a jolt of momentum into the entrenched Senate stalemate. President Biden's comments come after weeks of activists and liberal lawmakers feeling frustrated that President Biden was not leaning into the fight against the Senate rule, which is a major roadblock for many of his administration's priorities. The remarks do not automatically change the math problem, which Democrats do not have 50 votes for changes to the filibuster right now. But they are the latest sign of growing pressure on Senate Democrats to reform the rule. Biden has long appeared wary about getting rid of the rules of the Senate, where he served for decades. This has caused great frustration with progressives, who worry that without significantly changing the filibuster, which necessitates 60 votes for most legislation, much of the party's agenda would not pass in the chamber. Republicans, for example, blocked a revised election reform bill this week and are opposed to block a voting rights bill when it comes to the floor as soon as next week. President Biden had previously embraced the idea of talking filibuster, where senators objecting to the bill must speak continuously from the Senate floor. Madam President, the reflective obstruction from Senate Republicans is not, is not how the Senate is supposed to work. Not long ago, this chamber operated differently, in a way more befitting the world's greatest deliberative body. Debate, compromise, amend, and legislate, all with the purpose of helping the American people, even when people's views of how to do that differed. There was debate and amendment. We need to restore that legacy. We need to work to restore the Senate as the world's greatest deliberative body so we can better serve the needs of our nation. Republicans blocking one bill after another, even from consideration, is not that. And the fight to protect our fundamental liberties is as old as the country itself. And we can take note from the rest lessons of history. In the aftermath of the Civil War, the majorities in Congress passed transformative measures like the 14th and 15th Amendments to the Constitution and other civil rights bills, expanding liberty to tens of millions previously deprived of it. These are some of the crowning achievements of this body. But if you were in Congress back then, that's hardly how they were viewed by some at the time. Back then, <clears throat> the minority party refused to provide even a single vote to pass these laws, not even one. The minority condemned them as partisan tools of the angry, vengeful North, a power grab. The minority refused to come to the table, so the majority was willing to act alone, act alone, to pass civil rights legislation. It wasn't partisan. It was patriotic. Their actions made our democracy stronger, and they were willing to do what was necessary, including going it alone to defend our freedoms. Today, we feel the same way. The question now before the Senate is how we will find a path forward on protecting our freedoms in the 21st century. The members of this chamber can take inspiration from the great patriots of the past who put country over party, or they can cross their arms and watch as our 240-year-old experiment in democracy falls prey to the specters of authoritarian control. On Build Back Better. It's been a very productive week for Democrats as we inched closer to finalizing an agreement on President Biden's Build Back Better plan. I want to thank all my colleagues, especially our committee chairs, the Speaker, the President, and his team for their leadership. But he went significantly further during his town hall in Baltimore. President Biden stated, I also think we're going to have to move to the point where we fundamentally alter the filibuster President Biden pointed to the recent fight over the debt ceiling, where Republicans threatened for weeks that they would not help advance a debt hike before backtracking and providing 11 GOP votes 
for a short-term increase. If that gets pulled again, I think you're going to see an awful lot of Democrats being ready to say, not me. I'm not doing that again. We're going to end the filibuster, but it is still difficult to end the filibuster beyond that. These remarks don't immediately change the dynamics within the caucus. To get rid of the 60-vote legislative filibuster or change it in any way, Democrats need total unity from all 50 of their members, plus Vice President Kamala Harris, to serve as a tiebreaker. But Senators Joe Manchin and Kristen Sinema are very opposed to changing the filibuster, and Manchin especially has voiced his opposition to the idea of passing a carve-out that would exempt specific issues from the 60-vote requirement. Democrats and President Biden do not view it as politically savvy to pressure Joe Manchin, Kristen Sinema, and others on the filibuster reform, while at the same time needing their votes on the spending package. Biden is expected to lean more heavily into the filibuster reform discussions after the spending bill and a separate bipartisan infrastructure bill are through Congress, which Democrats hope they can complete in a matter of weeks. So friends, what are your thoughts on the filibuster? Please leave your thoughts in the comment section below. Friends, the key word for this video is lemon. If you would like to enter next Friday's Walmart gift card giveaway, please make sure that you click and like this video, comment below this keyword, and also make sure that you are subscribed to my channel. Thank you so much, friends. Lawmakers are considering a tax on billionaires to help cover the legislation's cost, which the White House has insisted will be paid via revenue and not deficit spending. This proposal would apply to taxpayers with more than $1 billion in assets or who have an income of more than $100 million for three consecutive years, roughly 700 of the wealthiest people in the United States. Senate Finance Committee Chair Ron Wyden said in a statement, The billionaire's income tax is about fairness and showing the American people taxes are not mandatory for them and optional for the wealthiest people in the country. No working person in this country thinks it's right that billionaires can pay no taxes for years on end, and sometimes never at all. While some details of the plan are still being worked out, and no final decisions have been made, the plan is one of a number of revenue-raising options under consideration. Right now, Democrats are working to reach an agreement that every member will support, since they need all 50 Senate votes to pass the legislation in a process that would allow them to move forward with a simple majority. Friends, thank you so much for joining me here this Saturday. The two winners of this week's Walmart gift card giveaway are Lois Moore and Daryl Lippold. If you would like to enter this coming Friday's Walmart gift card giveaway, please friends, make sure that you like this video, make sure that you are subscribed to my channel, and comment below the keyword from this video. Thank you so much friends and have a very blessed weekend.